Let's dive into the details of the investment presentation here for Yarrow Venture LLC. This is a 50,000 square foot development in a business and flex space. And I'll dive into more what that means uh, here in a minute. For investors, this is an 11% average annualized return. So we'll pay a 10% annualized interest payment per month, uh, plus 1.5 points at exit. This will be an 18 month project max. It could conclude earlier than that, but it will definitely not conclude anything past the 18 months. We got a $50,000 investment minimum with distributions beginning like clockwork on October 15th. And those distributions continue every month on the 15th for the life of the project. This is a 506B offering. We're welcoming accredited and non-accredited investors to this project. So let's jump in. Why do we like this deal? We've been looking at this asset class for quite some time, and I will explain that in a little further detail. But number one, this is an additional investment avenue for us. So DJE has been in the multifamily business for a long time. We've vertically integrated. We've got a team of 70 employees. We manage thousands of units of apartment complexes in San Antonio, and we really like that business. But it ebbs and flows like many things. And as of right now, as we record this, interest rates are high. Um, debt terms are not as favorable as they used to be. So it's just harder to make multifamily deals pencil. And that's not to say that we're out of the multifamily game, not by a long shot. We're still making offers. We're still looking at deals. It's just that we find mid-year and coming into the latter half of 2022, deal flow has slowed down. And if you're a passive investor and you're looking at multifamily deals, you've certainly seen that too. The deal flow on multifamily has simply slowed down. So it'll pick back up. And we want to continue buying multifamily, but we've built a team, we've built a firm, we've built investors, all kind of predicated on regular deal flow. So this is another way to get us regular deal flow, regardless of economic conditions. We really like that. We did that a few years ago with land. We expanded it into rural land, turned that into an investment process, and that's going very well for everyone involved. So we're continuing to do more of that as well. And we think there's an opportunity to grow this asset class as well. So... We like that. It gives us another thing to go do. We've got a big team. We want to stay busy and we've got a lot of investors. We want to keep capital at work. So this is another type of project for us to get into. The second reason we like this deal is our team. General contractor on this project is somebody that has done um, a tremendous amount of work on our large multifamily projects in San Antonio. They've been a contractor with us for the last two years and have executed on all types of multifamily projects for us, the office remodels, renovations, exterior projects, you name it. So there's a lot of experience there, but not only are they a contractor, they're also an owner operator of these types of assets in San Antonio. So I sat down with this contractor and about a year ago, ran these numbers, went and toured all their facilities, and I really like this asset class. And so the contractor that we're partnering with to build these for us actually owns and operates these. So we've been able to look at their books. We've been able to ask every imaginable question about how to run these deals and, in, and um, feel really good about getting into this. The third reason kind of piggybacking on the team there is this is relatively simple construction and leasing. We are already doing very complex, difficult things when we manage, let's say the a 400 unit property, the Helix over in the Med Center or 280 unit property. You know, all these properties that we manage are big, complex organisms that we're already managing. Um, so when we talk about 50 units of industrial slash flex slash slash storage space, that's actually easier than what we already do. So this is simple construction. These are metal buildings on concrete and it's a simple lease up. It's 50 units versus our multifamily stuff, which is hundreds of units at each location. Uh, and the tenant base is going to be easier to work with because it's a commercial tenant versus a residential tenant. So things from a, from a construction and leasing perspective are pretty simple as far as commercial real estate goes. And we like simple. So those are the top three reasons we like the deal. Number one, it gives us something new to work on and show investors. Number two, our team absolutely has experience with this type of asset and we're going to manage this and and lease it up in-house as well and number three it's a relatively simple project from a construction perspective and a leasing perspective 
this project is is on the smaller side of what DJE does in terms of a capital raise. So if this is interesting to you, please reserve a spot ASAP. I, this project's not going to last long. And I just say that based on the interest that, that we've already seen and the um, si relative small size of the project. Justin Liggett is our Director of Investor Relations. You can contact him. His information's there. Or you can just go in the portal and reserve a spot. That'd be the quickest way. But also, please feel free to contact Justin on this project for anything related to, to the, this project. Okay, here's a, a quick look at a rendering of, of these buildings. Again, it's about as simple as it gets. The metal building, you've got a roll-up door. Each, um, each unit has a small office and a small, very basic restroom. And our tenant base is uh, what we would say is people that maintain the physical world, right? These are plumbers, these are small businesses, these are HVAC companies, those types of things that just need an affordable place to keep their equipment uh, for the business. This is a look at the land that we already own and um, kind of some of the renderings around how we'll build out the, the buildings on this land. At the top there, you can see the map. This is on the south side of San Antonio, right off the highway. So we've got good um, access to the highway there. And this really caters to our demographic in kind of terms of this skilled workers and tradespeople that are going to be our tenants. So we will build approximately 50 flex space units on this land. We'll be a little over 50,000 square feet. And each unit will be a little over 1,200 square feet. And um, that's uh, that's what we'll do. So 50 units, pretty small for DJE. Again, our apartment complexes are anywhere from 150 to 400 units at each site. Again, kind of a, a rendering of how this will work out. A number of uh, metal buildings, really not much to it. Cheap to build relatively compared to multifamily. Uh, durable, et cetera. The business plan. Again, we like simple. The plan, buy the land, develop the flex space, lease it up, refinance the project. At the refinance, investors are taken out. So we'll buy the land, develop these buildings. Uh, we've seen ample demand for these units, limited supply. And again, the contractor team has already built owns and operates these in San Antonio. So it doesn't get much better than that in terms of not reinventing the wheel. We're simply doing something that already works and replicating it. Sources and uses of capital. We'll be raising $6 million for this project. I will be investing a million dollars for this project, taking us to a total of $7 million uh, total capitalization. How we'll use that. The land was a little over a million, construction, is a little over 4 million. We've got civil engineering, 75,000. Developer fee, a little over 300,000. An interest reserve for the project, close to a million. A contingency of 385,000. And we've got some uh, legal costs, miscellaneous for 37. So that takes us to our total of 7 million. We've got uh, some buffer in there with a the contingency and some buffer in there with a the construction cost as well. And I will say on the capital, this is the capital stack here, we've got no lender on this project, which significantly de-risks this for investors. So investors are coming in at about a 50% loan to cost. The valuation of this project is, is contingent on all sort of variables that we'll, that we'll deal with in the future. You know, the current market rates on the loan product, the leverage we get, the rental rates we're able to achieve. So there's a lot of variables there. We ran our underwriting fairly conservatively, but the point is for investors, there's no bank. Um, this is just our capital and investor capital. So worst case scenario, we could go get a loan and take out the investors at any point in this project. So we feel really good about being able to do that. Why are we, why, why even have investors? We could go get a loan on this project for less than 11%, um, for sure. But we are in the business of launching deals to investors. And right now we don't have a live multifamily deal to show investors. Uh, there's a lot of appetite to place capital. And so this gives us an opportunity to put a project in front of investors that's very de-risked, de -risked, a good return, and it lets, us, it lets us continue to put deals in front of investors. Even though our cost of capital is higher as a firm, I'm looking at this globally, at, you know, at the whole business here saying, we need to continue to put deals in front of investors. 
Um, let's do this. It's a win-win for everybody involved. That's our number one core value. Everyone involved wins. So we can win as a firm. Our teams can win. They can sink their teeth into a new project. We're providing this product to the community and investors win. We call that a win all around. And when we approach it that way, we can go do deal after deal after deal after deal. So that's how the capital stack is working out. Very low leverage, very low risk to our investment partners on this project. And it also gives us a lot of confidence to say that this will be an 18 month max project. If we run into some kind of massive construction issue or, or some sort of uh, you know black swan event, we still have the option to just refinance this project and take investors out. Same way we've impro approached all the land deals. We say, hey, we feel we're doing a 12 month maturity on the land deals, but we know if something happens, we can just get a loan on it and take the investors out. So we feel real confident about that on this project as well. The project life cycle, this is uh, about an 18 month uh, project that we're already well into. So we've purchased the land purchased the land a couple of months ago. We're into our civil engineering process and getting all of that stuff done that needs to be submitted to the city. Uh, as soon as that's done, or before that's done, we're gonna kind of kick off our construction. Construction probably takes about six months. About halfway through the construction phase, we'll begin our lease up process. So we'll start leasing these units. And once we've got this thing sufficiently leased, we take it to a lender or a series of lenders, shop it out to the banks, refinance it and take out investors. So we're anticipating that entire project from the day an investor funds the project to the day they're receiving their capital, no more than 18 months. I'd say there's a probability that this could you know, close out in 15 months, but uh, we wanna give ourselves a little cushion with the 18, but it will go no more than 18 months. That's for sure, even if we need to refinance out to make that happen. So that's the project life cycle. Um, that we're already well into now. We've conducted our due diligence on the land and have the land locked up, already own it. So we are, uh, we're moving right along and this is what it looks like. The timeline for the investment, we've got the offering memorandum and the webinar out uh, September 1. This is like all of our projects, a first come first serve offering. So basically whoever gets their wires in gets a spot in the deal. And then we've got uh, monthly distributions beginning like clockwork on October 15th and every month thereafter for the life cycle of the project. Distribution schedule again here, just kind of spelling that out. 10, 15, 2022 is the first distribution. And this spells out what a, a sample $100,000 investment looks like in terms of your payment schedule. Reporting, we will be doing um, a monthly report, just like our other projects, um, kind of a light monthly update, just so you know what's going on with the project. Uh, so it'll be an operational update on the 15th every month. And then on the 15th of the month following end of quarter, you're gonna get a more detailed report with performance, financials, et cetera, just like our multifamily projects. So kind of a monthly narrative operational update and, uh, and then a more detailed quarterly report. And then we'll give you 30 days notice before the project concludes. Uh, I'm an investor too, just like you. So I'm always trying to figure out when projects are maturing, what, what project I'm gonna roll that capital into. So we won't spring it on you out of the blue and say, hey, out of the blue, here's all your money back. We'll give you 30 days notice so you can start planning for your next uh, investment or whatever else you have planned for that capital. So we'll give you at least 30 days notice and again, 18 month maximum exit on the project. Okay, a little bit about our team. This is our, our corporate team and project managers here. Uh, by no means is this the entire company, but this is our corporate and project management team that will be involved. Uh, a lot of these folks will be involved in this project here. Uh, the leadership for this team, myself, I'm the principal of DJE, been in operation for a decade. We've done um, hundreds of millions of dollars of projects, thousands of units of multifamily, uh, over 5,000 acres of rural land now. Um, and so a lot, a lot of experience here in central Texas, Eli is our chief of operations. So he's going to be involved primarily in the lease up and marketing of the property, which he already oversees for all our multifamily. And then Justin, Justin Liggett, who you, who you know, our director of investor relations is uh, your point of contact for anything related to this investment here. History, again, if you're not familiar with our firm, established in 2012, vertically integrated, meaning we own the management company um, as well as run all the investments. We've performed hundreds of transactions across a number of asset types, over 5,000 units of multifamily, over 5,000 acres of land, 
and over 250 transactions at this point. And what I am most proud of in all of that um, history of the last decade is number one, we've never lost investor capital. Number two, we never performed a capital call, meaning that if we said, hey, this project needs X amount of dollars, we've never gone back to those investors in the project and said, you know what? We need a little more money. That's called a capital call. A lot of firms do that. We've never done that, and that's by design. So we feel real good about saying, here's what we need for this project. Investors invest in the project, and we take it from there. Uh, and then number three, we've met or exceeded return projections on all of our full cycle projects. Very proud of that as well. This is a, a snapshot of some of, the pro some of the land projects that we've executed on uh, so far, kind of a growing list. Um, again, our big thing is very simple. It's extremely difficult to execute on, but it is quite simple in that um, this is just do what you say. If we say we're going to do this term and this rate of return, we execute on it. So we've got a long demonstrated history of that that I'm very proud of. Next steps, if you're interested in this project, if you've invested with us before, you know the drill. It's exactly the same. You make the commitment in the portal. We will confirm the uh, commitment and Justin uh, we'll send you an electronic signature request for the private placement memorandum. You can sign it digitally right there in your portal. We'll countersign it, and then you can wire in funds, which secures your spot. Probably 75% of this project will be funded by investors that are taking proceeds from another DJE investment and rolling it into this one. So if it's a reinvestment, you know, for example, if we're sending you money back on a land deal that we're exiting, uh, and you've told Justin, hey, we want to roll this into the Yarrow project. Obviously, you're not going to wire funds. We're, we'll take care of that internally. But that's the process. Uh, disclaimer here. This is um, standard investment disclaimer, which is much elaborated on the P in the PPM. And that's really it. Uh, we're excited about this project. We've been studying it for over a year now and running the numbers, rerunning the numbers, building out the team and the processes to make this happen. And we're excited that this is a relatively simple project. We're excited to get into a new type of asset class. And the goal, frankly, here is to do a whole lot more of these in Central Texas and across Texas, potentially. So we expect to be doing more of these as we, um, as we get into this third asset class. We keep, wanna keep offering you multifamily. We wanna keep offering you land, rural land investments like we've been doing. And we would call this like the third leg on the asset stool. Uh, we wanna to continue to offer industrial um, projects as investments. So thank you for your time. And if you're, if you're a repeat investor, we thank you for trusting us with your capital. And we love growing it for you. So if everyone involved wins, like we set these things up, we can go do these again and again and again. Thanks so much for your time. We look forward to part partnering with you on this project. Take care.